if Renna strongly asked me to do something, or if she said, Pastor Rob, this is important to me, I would respect her age as an elder in the church, especially having talked to her at length now, and I know she's a sincere Christian. I would respect her age as a Christian, her age as just a person who's lived to be 97 years old, and I would want to please my elder, even Renna, even Clyde. But sometimes we go to uh, follow the Lord and he brings somebody younger than us. Not older, but there's that authority given by the Lord. And I'm regularly learning about authority. My place in the Lord's chain of command. Probably the earliest place I really learned it was being a father. I had my little son Joseph and then Jeremiah. And those were days when I was fasting as a young father. Fasting and journaling. Sometimes I'd fast a long time. Two, three weeks journaling and fasting. God brought people into my life who would answer questions I had and I would write it down as though it were the Lord speaking to me specifically. And I think that's what Rena would describe the church of those glory days when maybe you didn't come saying, I want to have assignments. I want to go out and visit people I don't know. But Rena told us about a lady on her list. She just, she was in submission to authority. Renna, I want you to go visit these five people. One of them becomes her best friend. I like that this centurion, he was like a shepherd after God's own heart. He cared about his servant. But he says to Jesus, when Jesus says, do you want me to come and heal him? I know what being under authority really means. And all you need to do is say what you want to have done and it'll be done. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done, just as you believed it would. And the servant was healed at that moment. I explained what it was like taking my brother to different faith healing services. When somebody from out of town was coming through, I heard about it on the radio. People are going to be healed. And I watched it, and it seemed like the Lord was telling me, this is not the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Some of this is just human suggestion. I heard one time in a different meeting, this man asked my brother, do you want to be healed? And my brother said, yes. And the implication was, if you believe it, you will be healed. And if you're not healed, it's not my fault. It's your fault. If you believed, look at this, just as you believed. Now, I want you to just go with me as a Baptist. As one who digs into God's word, maybe as a Sunday school member or a small group member where you dig into God's word, what does that really mean, just as you believed? What was it the centurion believed? What did he believe? I'm a man under authority, and I can speak, and those who are under my authority do what I say to do. Lord, you are able, even across distances. You don't need to come to my house. Lord, you are able. Go, let it be done, just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. You know what I appreciate about this leper in the first vignette? Don't tell anybody about this. Go present yourself to the priests and then offer the sacrifice as a testimony to him. God gives him a specific direction. The centurion who comes and exercises his faith, 
Lord, Jesus, you don't even have to come to where my servant is physically. All you really need to do is speak to, to the forces of nature. All you need to do is speak, and it'll happen. If you are all authoritative, if you're all powerful, the centurion went and did what Jesus told him to do, go. And the servant was healed at that moment. In this case, it's just a fever. Now, I know there are some very serious fevers, life-threatening fevers. Peter's mother-in-law is lying in bed with a fever. This is not a leper. This is a woman with a fever. The fever left her. And what'd she do next? She got up and began to wait on him. Jesus, would you like a cup of water? Jesus, could I make you a meal? How else would she wait on Jesus? For me, I'm looking at this as a play on words. Sometimes we go, uh, we have an encounter with Jesus, and then the next thing we need to do is wait. You can say it's serving him, but is waiting upon Jesus, serving him by faith, waiting upon Jesus? Now, most of your Sunday school teachers would say, when you come to God with a request, he has one of three answers for you, right? Have you heard it before? The answer might be yes. Lord, are you willing? Yes, I am willing. Lord, are you willing? The answer might be no, I am not willing to grant your petition. God's will does not allow for this specific request to be answered the way you're asking it. God might say no to your request. And then what's the other one? Wait. Is it serving the Lord to wait upon him? Yeah. And this is just a poetic thought that I have, that whenever you come into contact with the Lord and he blesses you and gets you through one chapter of your life, whether it's a long chapter or a brief episode, wait upon him both ways. Serve him and wait for what his next instruction for you is to do. I know there's all kinds of things in our heart that needs to be given up. It says so in James, that we ask forgiveness, that we repent, that we come clean before you and receive your healing. And Lord, really in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been healed and gotten a new heart, Father, but this body will, will perish. Thank you that we can understand a little bit of this today and for the stories and the testimonies, all that transpired, we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. What is God's will? Listen to Jesus himself. Father, if you are willing... Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to preach your word today, to read it publicly, to teach, to preach, to illustrate, to pray for the sick, to hear from the elders of the church. Lord, we thank you so much that we are a work in progress. You have a plan for us, and we just want to fulfill your plan, your way, in your time, according to your great power and your omniscience. Lord, bless us as some will leave this place. Bless us to know that they're going with us as they go on with their day. And then those who stay here to worship along with the music that John will provide for us with the band, we pray that you'll bless us in this place to continue to pray for one another and to intercede for those who have yet to come to know you the way we do. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God.